Derbyshire sits in the East Midlands region of England and borders counties including Staffordshire and South Yorkshire. It has a long and distinguished history. The Romans made use of the natural geological resources here, such as the lead ore in the limestone hills. Around a third of Derbyshire is taken up by the Peak District National Park. Roughly the size of Greater London, its appealing landscape of dramatic rolling hills and escarpments attracts around 10 million visitors each year. It's also an enticing destination for those looking to trade an urban existence for the countryside. Derbyshire's dramatic peak district is made up of a limestone upland plateau known as the High Peak and the White Peak, the lower valleys where the greyish rock is more exposed. Since Roman times, limestone has been quarried here for building and to produce lime and lead. But it really took off in the 19th century during the Industrial Revolution. The local workforce needed sturdy footwear and a number of bootmakers sprung up in villages. So today, just one company from that era remains. William Lennon & Co was established in 1899 and is the sole surviving heavy duty bootmaker in the UK, still using traditional methods. It's very much a family business and I've come to meet Lib Slattery, the great granddaughter of the company's founder. Hi Libs. Hello, pleased to meet you. Wow, I cannot tell you how excited <laughs> I am to be in a boot factory. And this is your life, isn't it? This is my life and four generations before as a family, yes. Boot yeah. making, has that been throughout the county of Derbyshire or is it just in this area? Predominantly up around here because we're a limestone area. So in the days of the quarrying, boot repairs were necessary and little cottage industries set up and uh, we uh, continued from there on. What makes your boots though so unique? The uniqueness of our boots is to do with that machine in the corner. Oh, yeah. There are only two in the world that we know are working. The other one is in New Zealand. And it attaches the soles of the boots to the uppers using brass screwing wire mm. in a certain way that nobody else can. So this is where they end up? This is where, yes, they're on the latter stages of their production in here. Would you like to see where they start? Of course. Yeah. Come on. From just three antique shoe-shaped lasts, or models, the company's skilled employees can create up to 15 different styles of leather shoe and boot. Using machines over 100 years old, bootmaking is a labour-intensive traditional manufacturing process. Without the aid of modern technology, everything is done by eye, and the whole process can take four days start to finish. So this is where it all starts. That's right. We're up on the top floor, or as we know it, the closing room, where the rolls of leather come in and uh, they leave here looking a little bit like a boot. So how do you start making a boot? OK. Three processes in here. We've got Phil. He uses all these knives, collects the right patterns and cuts them out of leather with his clicking press. Like a cookie cutter, but... A little bit like a glorified... A bit more serious. Yeah, a bit more heavy. Yeah, there you go. Then the leather, because of the thickness of the leather, mm. um, it has to be prepared to be stitched or closed, as it's called. So Lou operates what's called the skiving machine uh, to thin the leather down, ready for sewing. Finally, Pat uses various sew machines to uh, close the upper or stitch it all together. And by the time those presses have happened, the boot, or mm. should I say, upper, looks like that. The upper is then taken downstairs, where another machine is used to shape it into the form of a boot, before the brass screw wire machine fires lengths of twisted wire metal into the sole, fusing the layers together. So, your finished boots. A good old-fashioned working boot. Yeah, absolutely. It's like a work of art. Over the years, the design of the work boot has changed little, but a recent addition to the range is the vintage cycle shoe. Becoming more and more popular is this vintage retro look, and we have to have the shoes to match. And they are all leather cycle shoes, but they're made on our wide-fitting last for English wide feet. Do we have wider feet? We do, <laughs> in general, have wider feet. Thank you so much for showing me around. It's You're been welcome. brilliant. You're more than welcome. What a fantastic family business. With the firm's boots featuring in popular TV dramas and being worn by mountain explorers, it's good to see that traditional bootmaking is alive and kicking.